Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everybody to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig, joined as always by Jeff, and today we're going to get into our overvalued players list. I think we each have five players that we kind of think are a bit overvalued around the league right now we don't these are players we're probably not going to have on our teams just because where they're going for what their price is you just don't want to spend that much you don't want to reach in a snake draft for them so we're going to go over all of these guys kind of give our reasons for why we're not going to go after them but before that make sure you check us out on twitter at the ff profit we're on instagram at fantasy football profit the website's fantasyfootballprofit.com and you can always send us an email at fantasyfootballprofit at gmail.com. You can get a hold of us any of those ways for any types of questions you have, draft questions, keeper questions, you're debating on players, just let us know. We'll try to help you out the best we can. We also have our review contest going on. You can check out the show notes for that. And basically, write us a review, send it to us, and you might be able to win a free podcast for your league. So just get those in as well. And here we go, Jeff, right into our top five most overvalued players list. Who is your number five? Number five, I'm going to have to say, and this one comes with, uh, this is why he's number five on mine, but I would have to go DeAndre Hopkins. Okay. I totally understand why a lot of people fall in love with the guy. The, the fact is, right now, on average, he's ranked number 12th overall in the wide yeah, receivers. He's, he's inching up there, I feel like. So the scary part is if you get him, he is definitely a wide receiver 2 and possibly a wide receiver 1 on your team, depending on when you get him. He just comes with a lot of what-ifs. And they still haven't figured out exactly what that quarterback situation is going to look like. And I just have a very, very hard time believing that he's going to return to those numbers he was reaching two years ago. I, I think that is far from what he's actually going to get. Don't get me wrong. The guy is reliable as far as uh, that he's going to be on the field and playing. He's going to be playing hard. But, you know, last year, yeah, 78 you know catches for not even 1,000 yards and only four touchdowns, even if those numbers do increase, yep. um, which I, I, I assume they will a bit. But you're also doing it with either Tom Savage yeah, or Deshaun Watson. Or a rookie QB. It's or a guy who hasn't hasn't been a starter. So it's it's a t- it's an interesting situation. It's one that there's too much risk for me. I didn't actually he's not he didn't make my top five, but there's too much risk really for me to draft him most likely where he's gonna go. Yeah. And, and people are you're gonna draft him almost based off of two thousand fifteen, not off two thousand sixteen. You don't want to do that. Yeah. And his talent is carrying him and he really is that talented. He's just not in a position right now to be ranked number twelfth overall. Yeah, no, I hundred percent agree with that. I think that's a li- a little too high. But again, what I think the problem is the wide receivers kind of fall off after that top level where you're getting a player like Hopkins hoping he has that potential to be one of the that two thousand fifteen season again. So I see why he's there. I actually had him ranked twelfth, so I do see it. But the problem is, even at that point, I'm not drafting him. And I think he's actually gone down my rank since we did that. At that point, I think since then, Alshon's actually jumped him. Keenan Allen's jumped him. Doug Baldwin's jumped him. Yeah. So he has he is dropping my list as see, well. There, there's a lot of people, and I, I totally understand. And you know, it's it's hard when you look at these guys and you're just going straight off of wide receiver talent and potential and everything like that. DeAndre Hopkins is always going to catch your eye. He's a, he's a very special player, but um, yeah. With before I understand or before I really know what's going to happen with that QB situation, he's going to slide for me. Yep. All right. My number five is also a wide receiver, and this one actually might be a little more controversial. It's Michael Thomas. Oof. I've kind of gone off the Michael Thomas bandwagon, and here's the reason: it's not nothing to do with Michael Thomas. It's he is now the seventh ranked player in the consensus ranks. That is where I'm starting to, all right, he's a second-year guy. He had a great rookie season, but everyone is just assuming that, okay, Cooks is gone, all the targets are going to Michael Thomas, and it's not going to happen that way. I don't feel like he should be drafted ahead of T.Y. Hillen, ahead of Des Bryant, ahead of Amari Cooper. I do not feel like he should be ahead of those guys, and you don't think he should be ahead of Keenan Allen, probably either. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Pro- I, I like Keenan Allen more, but yeah, it's right there. But he see, just scares me because he's uh, going to be a sophomore. But see, that's where it is. I think I and I like Michael Thomas. It's the problem is I don't like his value right now. I don't like that you have to have. How comfortable are you going to be with Michael Thomas as your wide receiver one? Think about that in your team. My, Michael Thomas is your go-to wide receiver one every week. It's it depends, I guess, on who your second and third are. You have to have a very strong second and a very strong third. That you know in the level, if 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 it's not, you yeah you get Michael Thomas, but then you're hoping you're having like one of those. Guys, you almost have, have like an Alshon or something, even Doug Baldwin as your two. I just it, it I don't want him as my number one, and that's where you have to have him right now. Yeah, and I get that the, the fact that you have to draft him as a wide receiver one is scary. But I mean, to be honest, it, it's a tough call though because in that in the scheme of how important he is to your team, that is you know very very significant. But Last year, he ranked ninth overall for wide receivers but that's in with, non-PPR. That's with an injured A.J. Green. That's with an injured Des Bryant, who should go ahead of him. This that's very Keenan true. That's very, There's very true. There's a lot true. of these guys that could jump him and yes. should jump him. An injured Alshon Jeffrey, you know. There's, there's a lot yes, of these guys like that. Very, very so. true. I, I guess I understand the seventh pick, but... um. But at the same time, I, I agree with you. I think that's a lot of weight to put on a, a guy that we've seen one year that yep. has hasn't ever played a wide receiver one yet either. Yep. And it's just my only. It's I like the player. I really do. I just I don't like where he's getting drafted now. It's it's inched up even more from pretty much when we did our wide receiver ranks and talked about it. It just keeps inching up. Yeah. It kind of remind you know it's kind of like the combine where potential yeah. starts overshadowing you know what legitimate numbers could actually yep. be put and up. If he ends up dropping a bit, I'll fine. I'll get him. I'll, I'll enjoy. I'll like to have him on my team, but. Eh. Don't like him as a seventh receiver right now. I just I need to have. I, I guess I need one more season to really say, okay, yep, you're you're there. You're, yeah, that, if, you're that guy. If you're gonna make that investment, yep. in him, yeah. All right, number four. Who is your number four most overvalued player? My number four is going to be uh, Russell Wilson. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, QB right now. He's uh, ranked at number six. Yep. Where last year he finished as the fifteenth overall. Um, and he played in all games. I know he was a little hobbled, but he played a full season. Yep. Um, I haven't seen him get any more weapons necessarily. I don't think his rushing numbers will return. I'm just not sure why he made that jump all the way back up to number six. I think that's it's pretty crazy. People when, thinking his rushing totals are going to come back. Yeah. Moving over this, I don't think they are. No. Not and, to that and level. He's jumping above legitimate. You know, QBs that could give you a lot of production, yep. including Kirk Cousins, who was number five overall last year. So, I, you know, I mean, that's just a very, very hard – it's a tough sell for me. I don't, I don't fully understand it. And like I said, you know, there's a lot of wide – or running – or I'm sorry, QBs that I'd rather have. Kirk Cousins, Philip Rivers, Philip Rivers James, like, James Winston. <laughs> right. You want, we want all those. Like that you, you would probably almost feel more comfortable with because you don't have a price to pay for him. Russell Wilson is – you're going to actually – in an auction draft, you're going to have to spend a little bit to get him. Why do you waste your money on that when you can get Derek Carr, you can get – Philip Rivers for Jameis Winston for so much less. Why exactly. spend the money? And and you already know the risk involved. Yep. So why? Yeah, exactly. Why jump over those guys in order to take a larger yep. risk and pay more? Then that's what we're saying with this list. It's these are players we're just, we're, we just think they're overvalued right now. We're not saying anything. The player yeah, says be nothing fine. about the yeah. Now, Wilson could be fine, but I feel like he should he should be down the list maybe a little yep. bit more. You just don't want to take the risk and draft. Him, you know, with that kind of price, it's that's what fantasy football really is to me is trying to avoid too many chances in spending and overspending on players who are very risky. Russell Wilson is one of those risky players, especially if those injuries linger. I mean, ankle injuries, I mean, that's, if he's going to just be a pocket passer, that's fine, but Russell Wilson's, his entire fantasy value of being one of the top guys was his rushing ability. And there's, how can anybody say that's going to come back for sure? You can't. No. There's there's no way you can say that. So, so who do you have at number four? My number four is Tyreek Hill. Ooh. And it's actually, it's more off of where I think he's going in these ranks. He's 27th right now, which actually might be okay for the new situation he's in. I was going to say, but. <laughs> but I think he's going to be moving up. And th- this is, it's, I don't think it's quite taken over the ranks yet on where he's going to be ranked. He's going to end up being probably more towards the top 20. And I don't even want him at 27. I, I just... The news now is he's not going to return kicks now. He's going to return punts, but he won't return kicks. So there's just one added element right there that he might lose a touchdown or two. It's not much, but I mean he wasn't going to get a lot of touchdowns off that. But still, it's 
part of the, you know, what was so great about Tyreek Hill is he could do it a million different ways, score touchdowns. I feel like they're going to now try to place him into more of a situation where he is more of just the wide receiver. He's not going to be in the backfield as much. they got Kareem Hunt now. And Spencer Ware. How is, where's Tyreek Hill's running? Get, well, I see, he's not going to run the ball as much as he did last year. He might, he'll get a few, but that won't be as much. It's going to be more of just an actual wide receiver. And with that, I don't know if his value is as high. As high. He's probably going to be just fine. He'll be very good, but he's not. He's kind of this guy who people think is just... He's, he's a crazy athlete, just insane. And I think that's where people get blinded by it. And I'm never going to trust him. Maybe you will. Maybe you see it. He comes out, does great for the first few weeks, three, four, five weeks, and he, you can trust him. But I don't feel like he's a player you can trust. I feel like you're going to have some 20-point weeks. You're going to have some two-point weeks. And that's where I see him being. I can't I can't even have him as my wide receiver three. I'm not even, I just can't do it. Not, I'm not confident in it. Are you? Are you more without Macklin there now? I mean, it... it no, it, it does worry me. I... And Macklin did okay with with Casey when he was healthy his first year. He put up a thousand yards, almost eleven hundred yards actually, and eight touchdowns. Right? Yep. He's a different player than what this guy is. And what I worry about is the fact that maybe he's not as well of a rounded wide receiver that he's truly a guy that needs space. Yeah. So if if he's not this guy that can also come in and somewhat be a possession wide receiver, if he's only going to be his home run threat. I feel like he's going to be much easier to contain than he was last year where you get him the yep. ball in space in all sorts of situations and he can make people look stupid because of his speed. Yeah, Not but, saying that he won't have his moments to shine, but I do agree with you. And this is assuming he moves up. Yeah. Wide, wide receiver three, he would be very interesting to have. But yeah, at the same time, there's a lot of wide receivers I like. And at 27, I would have to give up a, a running back in a snake well, draft or yep. I would have to pay for him. Yeah, and just for reference here, 28th is Dante Moncrief. 31st is Martavis Bryant just throwing out guys you like yeah, there, I like you know. Yeah. So, um, I mean, you you might want him over put other players around him are Stefan Diggs and Brandon Marshall, which not eh, I don't know either. He's one spot below Larry Fitzgerald, and that's right there. That's a, almost perfect for me. That just shows what type of fantasy football player are you? It's Larry Fitzgerald, Tyreek Hill, back to back, complete opposite of players, and I think it shows the type of fantasy. Somebody's going to go for Tyreek Hill, and other people are going to go get Larry Fitzgerald and be safe as their number three. I'm Larry Fitzgerald. That's just how I am. Yeah. Larry Fitzgerald will be the one I have on my team because I think he's safe and has a safe floor. And let's not forget what team he's on. He's on KC, and they have one very, very strong issue that they've been dealing with a long time, that they are very, very poor at pushing it down the field, at throwing yeah. the deep ball. And someone that has that kind of speed, he's going to want that. That's going to be part of his game. So I, I just think he has a lot of things working against him, even though he's going to be a wide receiver one, supposedly. Yeah, and I just I don't know how it's going to be used. I don't know. I don't think it's going to look like last year, so I don't know what to expect. So I'm going to take the risk away and not go for it. Yeah. That's just how I'm going to be. All right, number three. Who do you got? Number three is a guy that I've been low on for pretty much every year. And he, he's – a relatively good player, but I think he's overhyped right here at number 12th running back overall. It's going to be Lamar Miller. Okay. Um, last year, he finished as 17th running back overall. And the truth is, he got more carries last year than he ever did any other year in his career. And he still had a four yards per clip, which wasn't bad. And yes, that offense was pretty poor. But once again, QB situation not really taken care of. And he's not a big back. So they brought in... Deontay Foreman, which is a big back, definitely gonna find, definitely gonna see some carries. Definitely could take goal line carries away from him, even though he doesn't have touchdowns anyway. Yep. Um, I think his carries will go down. I don't think his, you know, I don't think his yards per carry is gonna jump up all that much. I just don't, I just don't see this offense being able to help him produce for fantasy more than he already has. Well, he's been in the league long enough now, and. I mean, with two teams, and he still hasn't reached his potential, which he should. And honestly, running backs at this point in their career, they've already reached their potential, and they've probably reached their peak season for the most part. How many running backs do you know that become – there has not been many at all that later on in their career, all of a sudden they had hit a peak. Honestly, I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head. Justin Forsett, he did it. Other than him, how many guys – like most of these running backs you see it's in the first couple of years. And he didn't really do it in Miami, no. and he didn't do it last year. And yeah. and and this is not, I mean, not guaranteed or anything like that, but his average yard per carry has been going down 
you know, steadily the last three years. And yes, the new one was in a new blocking scheme at Houston first, you know, first time with the team. Um, he did hit a thousand yards, but like I said, he had 268 carries. I mean, there, it wasn't for a lack of handing it off. Yep. Um, so yeah, I think as the 12th running back, I, I think that you're, you're looking towards the fact that, that this guy is going to improve on those numbers, that he could truly turn into that running back one. And I think adding the depth behind him and kind of seeing what he's truly good at. And as far as football, yeah, he's a wonderful running back to have on your team. But I also, if I was them, I would not be giving – I would probably give him 200 carries instead of, you know – and that's 70 less carries. I think he's more effective at 200-some carries. I think that's what Miami figured out, and they realized it, and they never gave him too many more than that. only had one season above 200. He gets 268 last year, and he just – it's like he had 268, and he only played 14 games. Yeah, and like So his amount of carries he was actually getting was quite a bit, but he I don't think he can handle that work. What I also worry about with him is you think that a guy that is pretty shifty and a smaller back, you think that he would catch more balls. Yep. And on a team that couldn't get it done passing-wise last year, throwing it out of the backfield should be a safety net, and you should do that more, you would think. But last year he only had 31 catches for 188 yards and one touchdown. Like yeah. it, His receiving yards don't add that much – to his value. Yep. So it's like another kind of red flag for me, and I, he just won't be on any of my teams because I just don't think his value is anywhere near that 12th spot. Yeah, and see, the 12th spot's tough for me because it's right there at the end of the if, the... if he is your second running back, it might be okay. If you get him as your first, you're screwed. <laughs> you don't really want him as your second, though, even, but he's obviously you're never going to get him as your third, so how do you get him? It's just... Yeah, exactly. you don't. It's I don't probably probably won't have him on my team either. Just I'm not gonna. Not, he's not gonna be there. And you know, and once again, just to kind of drive it home, this is exactly why you want to pick up running backs early, is yeah. so you don't turn into this position where you have to have Lamar Miller produce on your team or someone in that same kind of realm. If you if you can get into a spot where you get two of those top ten, that's what you need. Yeah, that's if you, you if you spend the money or if you do the early picks, yep. you can make up for it later on. Yeah. So that was number number three for me. So my number three is also a running back. My number three is Spencer Ware at number nineteen, which isn't crazy. He's not way way up there, but still, that's a he's a running back too. And how can you possibly go into your season with Spencer Ware as your second running back and think you have a shot to win anything in fantasy football? You can't because what obviously the Chiefs. Like Kareem Hunt, they drafted him what third round. I think they even traded up to get him mm-hmm. in the third round. They want Kareem Hunt to be their guy. The third round for a running back these days—that's like the first round. It's it's really if you draft a running back in the first three rounds, you draft him as you want him to be the guy. That's pretty much what it's become lately. Not everybody's drafted in the first round. It's the second or third round guys are the, the, the player. These teams want these guys to be their guy. And Spencer Ware, he was fine last year. I mean, nothing special, not spectacular. And I think the Chiefs saw that. And I think that's what they're they're going away. They drafted a quarterback. They drafted a running back. I think they want to go away from the just averageness of Alex Smith and Spencer Ware. And I think now they're going to try to do that. I mean, yeah, once Smith's gone, but with Mahomes and Kareem Hunt and obviously Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, they want that to be their team, I think. So there's no guarantee Spencer Ware is going to be the starting running back, even at the start of the year. I think he will be at the start of the year, but how long is it going to last that's my worry with Spencer Ware. I don't I don't think you can trust it, and you can't have him as your second running back. Yeah, and I agree. He was on my short list uh, as well of overvalued. Yep. Um, you know, he's, it's, it does get pretty muddy down there, so it's kind of right on the line. But, I mean, you hit on it. Last year, he not only, but he had 214 carries. He had a decent average clip of 4.3, but he, he only had three touchdowns. He, he, he's okay. He's just yeah, okay, he's okay, but that's not what you need. Exactly, and right. even if Kareem Hunt doesn't overtake him, you have yep. to believe that he's going to cut into his carries significantly compared to Chuck Andrews West or yep. whoever they had you know, else running the ball last year. Um, I agree with you, and you know they're not, they're not uh, kind of beholden to anyone. So yep. uh, I, I do think he is, he is propped up on the fact that he – Everyone thought he was going to be the guaranteed number one, kind of like the breadwinner of the, you know, rushing committee, and it yep. doesn't seem that way anymore. And no. that's a lot of speculation, but that's also a lot of doubt you should take mm-hmm. into the draft because if you're wrong on him and you pick him as your number two, you're yeah, that's, that's a tough, very that's a very tough dark hole to yep. crawl out of. It really is. It's a tough miss there. It, it just I I'm not, I can't see myself having Spencer Ware on my team. That's another, these, that's why these guys I just I don't see any. 
I don't see a situation where they end up on my team. No, and, and this is especially something like this. Even if I don't find out, say, Kareem Hunt, I don't know what happens. I don't know if he's going to get a majority of the carries or split time or anything of that. I would, in this case, I would much rather take Kareem Hunt yep. very late yep. and just kind of so think we, that yep. when it hits halfway through the season, it's going to be a timeshare, and this guy is going to put up relatively similar numbers the second half yep. of the season as Spencer Ware. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And then I would actually debate it on this spot. I almost put another player. I put I almost put C.J. Anderson there. That right. was uh, it's the same kind of thing. It's similar. It just because he has Booker yet there and Jamal Charles. And who knows? It's and he he's ranked 18th. So it's those kind of guys that can you have him as your running back too when you just don't know? Yeah, and, and especially with, if you find out that Charles is somewhat healthy. Yeah, we he's the he's the running back. You know, he's going to take away a lot yeah, of cares. We have no idea yet, but it's yeah. just it's a big risk. So that was my number three. Who is your number two? Number two, and I, my last two are the people I, I truly have an issue with. Yep. Um, my a strong disagree with where they're ranked right now. My number two overall is Sammy Watkins. Okay. And I realize that I always say I rank them according, not assuming that they're going to be hurt or anything like He's that. He's different. But his injury <laughs> past is so, so relevant, and the fact that you can't get by, by it. I mean – the guy cannot stay healthy. And he's jumped up to 16th now. Yeah, 16th overall. Can you imagine having to <laughs> pick your wide receiver, too, that you're not sure if he's going to play half the year or maybe only one game as a mm-hmm. nagging injury, didn't have surgery. He has really no other wide receivers to help him. So even when he comes back, he's going to get all of the all of the uh, attention on him. And he's in an offense that's not exactly prolific at throwing. I mean, Tyrod Taylor likes to run it. He usually only has, like, what, maybe 20 throwing touchdowns a year? Yeah. Um, so it, a lot is stacked against him, not to mention he's never been able to really put together a, a full season, you know, and it just seems like his body – is getting worse. Mm-hmm. I like Sammy Watkins. I like his potential, but it sounds like the, the foot injury is still there. Like, yeah. uh, we, there's there's yeah. been nothing to say that he's fully healthy. And believe yet. me, it has nothing to do with the fact that if he was fully healthy, it doesn't matter oh, yeah. what team he's on. He's truly that talented. If you have a foot but, injury and you're wide receiver and it's not it's lingering and there's no surgery because yeah. there's really nothing to correct, like, what do you do? But, to be honest, oh. are you going to pick Sammy Watkins in the first? I'm looking picks? right here. No, because. Demarius Thomas is one spot below him. There's Devontae Adams, Keenan Allen, even Crabtree, Terrell Pryor. Those are all the guys right after him. Even Crabtree, I'd get it. I mean, Crabtree doesn't have the potential that Watkins has, but Crabtree has the floor. That Watkins', is, Watkins is floor is the absolute lowest you can go yeah. in, a, in a league. He really is. I can't see myself getting him because, man, it's going to have to take a low – no, I just I don't – I can't see it because even a low price is like, well, I feel like I'm th- I could just be throwing this money away in an auction. Like, it's too it's too big of a risk for me, and uh, you know I think I'd probably rather have Larry Fitzgerald down there, and I know Fitzgerald would just be solid, and I, I almost would rather have that. I, it's tough. It's, it'd be very tough. And I like yeah, these guys are just players that I can't see on my team. I feel like you see these players on somebody else's team, and you're like, yeah, the team's no good. They're not winning the championship. Yeah, you it, know these are those guys. It has to know. come to a point where you're. There has to be a certain amount of predictability with your team and I think yep. him being that high throws that all out of whack I just and I just That's cannot see a world where you can be successful in drafting him that high no because I would love to have Sammy Watkins on my team I honestly would but I want to do my wide receiver four and I don't want to spend for him when, yeah. how's that going to work and you're, he'll just, never he will never it, fall to you at that alright my number two player probably again this is another one that people might just kind of be like think I'm throwing out names just for the heck of it and just to be controversial which I'm not it's Christian McCaffrey. And the reasoning behind this is Christian McCaffrey is now jumped up to be the 16th ranked player. So he's, he's moving up the board a little bit. And my worry with that is it's a rookie running back. And it's not just a rookie running back. It's not like you have Leonard Fournette throwing going to the Jacksonville. You know, he's the bell cow guy. He's going to get all the carries. We don't know how they're going to use Christian McCaffrey yet. And this is where I try to stay away from risk. Is Christian McCaffrey is going to be this player that everyone likes and is going to spend big on Christian McCaffrey because he's a top ten pick in the NFL draft? But how are they going to use him? Do we do we have any clue yet? At this point, right now, we haven't seen training camp and all that preseason. We have no clue. If you get into the preseason, and I mean, still they're not going to show a lot in the preseason. They're not going to show probably a lot of how they're going to use McCaffrey. You might be able to see a little bit, but. And it's going to be tough because you're not going to know the situation. Jonathan Stewart's still there. 
Cam still runs the ball. It's just I can't. It's too much risk to get him as a mid. He's a, right in the. If, if you're in a 12 team league, he's almost at the top of the RB twos now. That's I can't. I don't know if I want him as my RB two. I wouldn't mind it, but you know how there's going to be somebody in your league that falls in love with the rookie running backs and spends way too much for him. So how is he ever going to be on my team? It's not going to happen. And I think it's just. I think he's just too high up there for what he should be at this point. I just. I'm. I've been looking into this more and more and more. I just think there's too much risk. I just can't. Ah. These, that's what I say. It's, it's not even maybe. It's not even him. It's these mill running backs in this spot. I think I could put them all on my list, and they're all overvalued. <laughs> and I, I could pick any one of them. I almost put Isaiah Crowell on my list because I feel like his hype is getting too much. Like, uh, yeah, I see. I disagree with you on that one. But <laughs> to to piggyback off your point, Christian McCaffrey, I'm not as worried about. But I just don't the guy is ranked right behind him at 17th is Joe Mixon. And I, I almost put, I, I almost put Mixon. Yeah, he was on my like, short list. He's and I my think, honorable mention too. I and I understand that at this point you're just you're reaching for that yeah, that possibility because the next guys you kind of know where you're getting right. So I understand the thought behind it. But to put a and and I feel like I said I'm I'm much more of a McCaffrey fan than a Mixon. But to throw him on these teams, especially Mixon, where there's two other running backs, and yet, you know, Bernard is a little banged up. Yeah, it and, sounds like he's he might even yeah. not be ready for the start of the yeah. year. Yeah, and Mixon truly is a, a, a wonderful athlete, but we didn't really get to see enough of him. I mean, he's completely off of potential. At least McCaffrey, you got to see more of him in college, and and I guess and, and because McCaffrey, they could use him different ways. There should be there could yeah. be more room for value. I just. I do think that he is going on a, a worse offense, though. So, to your point, Christian McCaffrey yeah. is going to be asked to do a lot right it's away. Just, I'm just so I, – I guess I just so – I stay away from risk in fantasy football so much where, yeah, McCaffrey and Mixon aren't the guys I'm getting because I don't want a rookie like that as my running back too. Fournette, it's a different story. I would have Fournette. I would too, yeah. But I'm going to – the rookies I'm going like, to take are going to be Kareem Hunt for Samaj P. Ryan. Those kind of guys, and even Dalvin Cook, if he drops far enough, which I don't even know if he's going to drop far enough. He's starting to be almost—he's not quite overvalued to me yet. He's in a good spot, but it could happen if he, especially if he has a good preseason game, just kind of like Amir Abdullah a couple of years ago. Exactly. We, I mean, actually, we did—we both bought into that hype. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he looked great his first. But game. see, that's <laughs> what's going to happen. It's one of these rookies. At least one of them is going to really sh- just look great in preseason. And all of a sudden, people are going to fall in love. Even people like us who are usually pretty good at this, we fall in love with that. Oh, my, look at this guy. We can get this guy for nothing. And well, yeah. we actually were in a bidding war for Abdullah. Yeah, you got him. I did. That was, uh, well, you won on that one. And I won the championship that year. Yeah. So it worked um, out. But I, 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 do, and I think that's going to be the case for uh, one of these guys. McCaffrey or Mixon, I think he's gonna, they're going to have one big play, and probably in the receiving game. And then people will lose their minds. And I'm just telling you. Temper I just, those expectations. I worry about rookie running backs as my running back too. Yeah. I just the really only know. reason I, I feel safe with St. Fournette is because he, he's just he's going to get a ton of yeah, yeah a ton of carries. He's he's truly talented and he's he's a kind of prototypical running back, right? Yep. You know, yep. you hand the ball off to him twenty times, he's going to get you know some yardage and a and a touchdown. McCaffrey and Mixon, they're all over the place, and they have they have competition. Mm-hmm. Fournette has no competition. There's even rumors that Yeldon could be cut <laughs> when they're coming. That, you know, if that's not a uh, a badge of you know honor from the yep. team, I don't know what is. They really feel strongly about Fournette. All right, who is your number one my, guy? My number one, and it it really is mind blowing to me. Is it's Cam Newton. He made he he would have been my six. I did, he didn't make my list, but he I had just him. I just can't believe it because seventh? he's ranked seventh. Mm-hmm. So he's a QB one that people are feeling safe about. Last year, <laughs> yes, he they were bad once again, but he was ranked number nineteenth, and he only missed one game. And once again, like, do you really believe he's going to return to the his form where he's running all of those touchdowns in? <laughs> we're just talking about Christian McCaffrey. They added another guy who's going to score those touchdowns. It's not going to yeah, be Cam. And <laughs> even last year, and this is what is. He only missed one game, and last year he still had 350 yards rushing with five touchdowns. It's not like he didn't score anything. I just don't – I see those numbers maybe remaining the same. And the fact is he only threw 19 touchdowns, and the year before when he threw 35 was, was a complete such fluke. a fluke. If you look at his career, 19 yeah. touchdowns is 24 more 24 was the next biggest. Yep. So yep. I, I – th- you, I don't see any way how? he jumps back up. And not to mention, they didn't add that many. They get him, you know, uh, a running back, yep. so maybe he catches a few out of the backfield. And one wide receiver that's going to play, like, the slot position that is yep. a rookie, so you have no idea what's going right. They didn't add that much no. to his well, arsenal. And, and actually, um, didn't make my list, but made my 
honorable mention was Greg Olson because we talked about him a few episodes when he did his tight end rankings. His end of year was terrible. And everyone just assumes he's going to jump back up there. With And that's part of the reason Cam's going to be better. How uh, how are we sure? Are we sure that's going to happen? I'm not. All right. So here, I'm going to do a little game here. Cam Newton is the seventh quarterback on the list. Tell, stop me when I find a guy that you would actually take him over. Okay. Uh, below him. Jameis. No, not a chance. Cousins. No, definitely not. Mariota. No. Nope. Carr. Definitely not. Roethlisberger. No. Dak. I'd rather have Dak, yeah. Rivers. Definitely not. Stafford. Um, Maybe on potential, but no. I'd take Stafford, actually. And then Tyrod. Is that where, <laughs> is that where you want him? Oh, see, that's brutal. I mean, where did you rank Cam Newton? 16th? Um, How far down did you put him? I can't remember. I don't, know, I don't know what I had in my my uh, my Your original rankings. Yeah, I had him really far down. I think he was. I, a, I was way uh, way down. I think you had him about 16th, and right there, that would put him. If you put him ahead of Tyrod, you put him at 16th. Okay, I was going to say and Tyrod so, would be an interesting one, but, but like you said, I, I think Tyrod will rush for more. So I think Tyrod has more of the running ability. And yet. I know I just bashed on Sammy Watkins, but say for if some he reason, does, yeah. he has say Zay Jones and Sammy Watkins yep. all healthy with McCoy. I would easily take Tyrod yep. Taylor. But for the most part, those guys below him, you're probably gonna you're gonna want them, those guys. And actually, my ranks, Newton's gonna drop. I can I already been messing around with it. And some of the like, I don't remember if Cousins was ahead of him or not, but Cousins will definitely be ahead of him. Mariota, I mean, there's I'm I'm dropping him. And yeah. it's just the more I look at it and the more we talk this over every week and we bring this stuff up, how do you how do you draft him? Like you're drafting Cam Newton now as a seventh guy because of his because his name's Cam Newton. Yeah, I mean he is a. And you remember athlete. what he did? And not too much. He did have he had shoulder surgery in the offseason yep. as well. Which who knows? Maybe that will fix some things. Yep. But it's not going to fix an extra ten touchdowns. And if anything, you're worried that maybe it will actually hurt his throwing. Yep. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I, I think Carolina is in line for another really slow production on offense, and I think Cam Newton is just going to take the brunt of that. I I agree. My number one player is Allen Robinson. Okay. He is now the 14th ranked player in the list. That puts him ahead of Alshon, which I want Alshon ahead of Allen Robinson. Demaryius Thomas, Devontae Adams, Keenan Allen, Crabtree, Pryor, all those guys. I want them ahead of him. I they Yeah, they added Fournette, which is going to help, should help the offense, and he should be good, but I don't want Allen Robinson as my wide receiver, as my wide receiver too. I, I just don't. I don't. Th- Blake Bortles, I think, could have a decent year. I'm not. I'm not sure yet. I'm Blake Bortles. I'm really not. If I had to bet on it, I would say Blake Bortles isn't a good NFL quarterback, and that he's going to be a poor season again. <laughs> yeah. I would. That's where I would lean. I can see the other way. I can see how it could. He could actually impress, and I. I agree with giving him another chance for sure to really see what you have there. But I can't see myself drafting Allen Robinson there at 14 as the 14th receiver anymore. I, I think it's too high. I think he needs to be down lower on the list, and I the, he just he feels like a big risk to me. How bad of a season he had last year, and he didn't make my top twenty ranks in my initial ranks. So, and he's up. To, and you, he was seventeenth in your initial ranks, which is only a couple spots below. But I think fourteenth is just too high. Yeah, and he, he's another one. He's very similar. When I was looking at these guys, he kind of um, him and De, DeAndre Hopkins were very similar to me. And after you know, Allen Robinson was kind of a little farther down my list as far as being overvalued. Just because I know he has that potential, they did fix the running game, so it should help a bit. Um, you know, I, I think his touchdowns could easily go up because he only had six last year, and I realize he's not going to return to form. But that's right, I didn't, I didn't pick on him in particular. But yeah, I, I would feel very uncomfortable taking him there. But at the same time, I think he has more of an ability to jump back. Um, but I, I have no, no issue with you calling him overvalued because. If he has another year like last year, he was. Yep. I mean, what was he last year? Number twenty ninth yeah. overall. Yeah. Is he? He's just getting. He's getting ranked back up there because everyone expects two thousand fifteen to come back. Same thing with Cam Newton. Everyone expects two thousand fifteen to come back. Yeah. If you have you know? one good year, people are very very quick to forgive. <laughs> I I just I like more consistency in my picks, and I I don't like to take many chances. I really don't, and there's too much of a chance there yeah. now. And Not to mention, I mean, and it's kind of funny too because. You see, once again, you see the reoccurring theme of wide receivers 
If, if you think they're overvalued at all, don't take them. Yeah. Wait, because there's so much value lower. Yep. And on running backs, the fact that we're talking about the 12th, the fact that we're talking about anyone in between, just shows how, <laughs> how shallow it is, and that's why we're you know worried about those positions. Yeah, and say those running backs in that 10 to 20 range, you can make a case for any single player there being overvalued almost. I really think you could do it. You could honestly make a case for almost everybody. And I say Crowell, I'm not even joking about that. I've been a big Crowell guy. But I'm just I, I worry about can the Cleveland Browns running back really be a, almost a running back one? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It, it, it's starting to get dangerous. <laughs> you know, but at the just, same time, just, I, I do. Yeah. Once I, again, I, I'm, yeah. I'm starting to gain steam on Crowell more than you, but I, I do like him comparatively. All right, I think that's it. I think that's it for our overvalued players. That's all I got. Anything else to add to the list, Jeff? Any other players that you thought maybe that you, you considered that we didn't talk about? Uh, no, I think we mentioned all of the ones. See, yeah, the only other guy I have on my list that we didn't actually bring up was I had Deshaun Jackson because he, he's now 32nd ranked player, which he's not even going to – that's like a wide receiver three almost. In 12-team leagues, it's wide receiver three. Is Deshaun Jackson going to be your wide receiver three? He, he'll never will – he be, Will he be a wide receiver four? Will he be a wide receiver five? Yeah, he just will never make my team. Because you will never start him. Yeah, exactly. I won't, I won't feel comfortable starting him. He's too banger bust. And he doesn't have that potential like a lot of these younger guys way yeah. down the list have. Well, because, yeah, let's say with Deshaun Jackson, that's, he didn't make my list, but I like to talk about that. He's 32nd. He's one spot ahead of Calvin, Calvin Benjamin. That's crazy. Then The next is Willie Sneed. Well, we love him, too. And then Jameson Crowder. And I'm a big fan How of How are well. you going to have Pierre Garçon? Next one I'll probably have over Deshaun Jackson, honestly. I think Garcon's going to be more consistent. So, and then Rashard Matthews, Corey Davis, Devontae Parker, Cam Meredith. I was going to say Cam Meredith. There's a lot of guys down there. And Why take a chance on an up-and-down Deshaun Jackson who's aging? Why? why? So, he's my, he would have been my other guy. So, I think that's it for – that's all I got. I got no other players. We'll be back next week with some more – Episodes. I don't even know what we're going to get to yet. We have so many actually topics coming up here as we start gearing up for the actual season going up. We'll have rankings updates coming up. Where you know our rankings have changed already since we had our rankings episodes. So we'll kind of go over that. And I think there's going to be an episode coming up where we talk about some of these guys that we actually really disagree on. There's a few guys out there that we're just kind of off on. So we'll talk about those. We'll have all those things coming up. So we will have those episodes for you guys, and we'll talk to you next time.